Well guys, I've arrived at Lock Ken. The sun is setting, so I don't have a lot of time before the sun completely sets, so I need to set my tent up. I'm having a mare. My bike, completely flat. Flat as a pancake, won't start. This Lock Ken Caravan Park, open all year round, tents and caravans. Well that's a lie, isn't it? So, I can't speak to anyone in there. Bike's conked out, dead as a dodo. Looks like I'm going to be on this bit of grass tonight. Wow, feels weird just plonking my ass down in the middle of just somewhere so close to a road, but needs must. Anyway, I better get cracking before I proper lose the light. And just like that, I lost the light. So I got my head torch out and began to pitch the tent. I actually thought that you'd be able to see a lot more of what I was doing, but in my naivety, it seems that you can just see a little dot flying around the screen, which doesn't really make for entertaining viewing. So I'm gonna speed up this bit, save you the boredom, and we'll cut straight to once the tent is pitched. Well guys, the tent is pitched in pitch black and yeah, a bit disappointing that that place wasn't open because now I have to be all feral and be at the side of the road and then I have the added worry that the Sinus is refusing to start <laughs> no way, so so the situation with the Sinus was I went to leave on it this morning and the battery was flat so we had to bump it so we bumped it and then I had all my heated stuff plugged in so I came to a stop a little bit down the line because I wanted to check something on the bike and then ah that was it I thought the bag was going to fall off <laughs> the back so I stopped switched it off thinking oh it's been running for a bit I'll get some charge in it went to start it wouldn't bumped it and then didn't wear my heated gear because I wanted to give the battery a chance to actually get some charge into it. So then went to a few petrol stations, went to a McDonald's to use the toilet, you know, stopping, starting the bike, no dramas. Then I thought, oh, it's an hour and 40 minutes to where I need to go. I'm pretty cold. I'll put the heated gear on. It should have enough charge in it. Eh -eh, didn't. So I switched it off up there. And not that you can see. And yeah, it basically just conked out. So I've had to push it here to a patch of grass that I think is semi-suitable for a tent. And here we are. So yeah, even though I'll have to deal with an issue like that tomorrow, there's a, a really steep marina down there, which I might bump start it. Hopefully I don't go sailing into the lock. But yeah, I'm going to get sorted in the tent, get comfy because I'm still in all my bike stuff and sort myself out for the night, I think. Guys, look at this setup. I've got a sleeping bag, got all the bags and clothes shoved in. Helmets, cameras, everything. Well, guys, it is eight o'clock at night. I'm currently in my tent. Now, I was planning on going outside, using my pots and pans and, you know, cooking my pork medallions that I'd seasoned, especially for my wild camp to Scotland. But the truth is, I'm not hungry. I um, had a cheeky three select just chicken strip things from McDonald's on their own, but I'm not hungry at all, so I'm not going to sizzle the pork medallions tonight. Plus, you guys, I can't take you guys with me because you just can't see them because it's just pitch black out there. So I might call it a night. I might read a book, chill out, and hopefully get up nice and early for the sunrise. That's my plan. Make a nice cup of tea and... Uh, yeah, try and bump start the bike, which should be fun. <laughs> so yeah, 
stick around for that but yeah i'm gonna go to bed pretty soon take care guys bye morning guys i hope you well oh let's just say that was not a good night's sleep not a good night's sleep at all but here we are it is quarter to eight lots of cars outside it's quarter to eight the sun is rising and yeah i'm gonna get ready to to just shoot off i was gonna make a brew and and cook but the truth of the matter is I've just had that much of a bad night um, but I'll explain it all on my way home with the riding I'll see if I can start the bike oh, so it'll be a nice call to Michael Michael come and get my ass <laughs> but fingers crossed I can get it started I really want to get it started so we'll see So guys, I've seen this bridge on a lot of people's like Instagrams and stuff like that when you search Loch Ken and I thought that I could go and have a, a wonder over it but it says that it's locked and it's private property so I'll show you what I can see anyway and uh, yeah it's quite an interesting little thing. Oh it's pretty chilly today guys. Sheesh. This is the bridge. How cool is that? It's a shame that we can't cross. It's so windy, it's so cold. But we made it to Loch Ken, so that's all that matters. Right, so the trouble is, it's obviously light now, which causes me a problem trying to wee. There's a lot more cars going by, and I do need a wee, and I'm not quite sure where I'm supposed to go to wee. So, I mean, I went to the campsite, but the reception was like really, really far away, because it's a really big campsite, and I don't really want to be too far out of reach of my tent and my valuables and stuff so not ideal so yeah I'm not quite sure where I'm supposed to be actually I mean a key with this awesome view would be great but I've got to figure out that car's just bogged off so that's a good sign go that way I might just wee in one of these ditches classy classy lady do what you gotta do to stop yourself getting a urinary tract infection. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I'm brave enough. If not, I'll just start packing up and bump the bike and go to a local coffee shop where I can just have a coffee, a cake, a cake for breakfast. Is that right? Might try it. <laughs> and yeah, make the start the jaunt home five hours away. So this was the tricky bit about tent life, is all the cold air gets under there and it just smacks you in the face. Let's see if it'll fire. Nope. Okay. So, let's see if I can bump it. Oh, Jesus. Let's get on the gravelly stuff. Come on, you got this moment of truth. It is a moment of truth. First gear, let's give it a go.
one was. It must be. Oh, yeah. Push it back up the hill. Not ideal. It almost had it then. Come on. Up the hill. into a nice dip here okay round two round two Whew. that's the, uh, the fun thing with bump starts it's great if you get it right first time. If it don't work, I'll push it back up the hill you came from. Come on, you got this. Get some speed going. Yes! Oh, thank the Lord on a stick. Second time. Second time. Not too bad. Smells fuely. Second time. Okay, I'll take it. Just needed more speed the first time round, but I was a bit of a different deal. But paranoia of putting it into neutral, praying it's actually neutral. <laughs> scrapey, scrapey. Problem is now it's very cold, and I can't put my heated gear on because if I put my heated gear on. I can guarantee it won't fire up and next time I might not be so lucky with a hill I uh, might not have a hill around or anyone to give me a shove so I'm gonna do the first part of the journey until I need some fuel fill up and then when I know that I can just go straight home then I'll plug the heated gear in because it's freaking chilly today, let me tell you. Whew, look at the mountains. Freezing. But that's one problem solved. Now to get everything packed. Phew. So it was time to put the tent away. And the reason I did this after the bump start was number one, I wanted as little weight on the bike as possible. And two, if I fail to get the bike started, I was going to have probably a nice three hour wait until I could get recovered. So I thought I'd keep the tent up just in case so that I had a bit of shelter. So it was time to pack everything away and leave the area as I found it. No trace that I had ever been there. Once everything was packed up and loaded onto the bike, it was time to start the five hour journey home. Damn, son, I've got that off to a fine art, haven't I? Let's be having you. Off home we go. On our journey back to England. So guys, I've got a lot to debrief you on. So last night it was a bit, it was a bit crazy because I knew I was fighting the light. I knew I was fighting it bad. So I was riding around Loch Ken for ages looking for somewhere that would be a suitable place to park. I needed somewhere that I could bump the bike if I needed to, so preferably near a hill. 
somewhere where I was just far enough away from the road to be kind of out of sight but also close enough to the road so that you know I could actually get back to the road so I'm not crossing all sloppy mud and stuff like that because I'm on my own and the last thing I want to do is get stranded I travel around, I pass the caravan park, it's all locked up because that looked like a really nice place to, to pitch my tent I would have actually thrown money at those guys for them to let me stay there but it was all locked up carried on, couldn't find anywhere turned back round and then just kind of went back to the the caravan site because they had a bridge there which I'd seen on like Instagram and stuff and it looked really like photogenic and like a marina which I found so yeah I pulled up and I switched the bike off big mistake flat so then I had to push it just down a little bit to a flat bit of grass and I thought well I guess it's decided for me where I'm staying I've got to stay here <laughs> I can't really go anywhere else <laughs> um, but it was a, a nice location if I'd have been there a bit earlier and the sun was still out and it wasn't dark I would have loved to have cooked some food near the marina but the marina was just far enough away from my tent to make me a bit paranoid about my belongings and stuff so that kind of sucked and to be honest on the way here I filled up with some fuel I was desperate for a wee so I stopped at McDonald's and I had a few cheeky chicken selects but that meant when I got to my destination I wasn't hungry I was just thirsty so I've got the pork medallions in my bag still you know what Mike's having for tea tonight, don't you? So the night was truly horrific. I think because I was so close to the road, I felt a little bit vulnerable, I won't lie. It was very cold, the wind was getting under the tent. I was absolutely freezing all night. I was trying to sleep, but then I kept getting woken up by rustling that sounded eerily like somebody was outside my tent the first time it happened before I realized it was the wind I literally just kind of froze a little bit because I thought there's, there's somebody outside my tent this is this is horrendous because it's pitch black outside probably like really really early in the morning so I cough because I don't want to say like hi Oh, uh, what are you doing in my girl voice so I just coughed and then it hit me that it wasn't actually a person it was just the wind making the outer shell of the tent like rustle and flap but honestly it, it would have I'd have periods where it was really really quiet because there was no wind but then when the wind did come it was heavy it was hard and it was making a lot of noise and literally just being awful and then there was the bird sounds so that was kind of cool except i watched a documentary once on the missing 411 and that's all about like scary like mythological creatures called skinwalkers and there was this bird and it was making freaking skinwalker noise I'm like can you not please like I don't want to die today and it just kept getting closer and closer and then it stopped for a bit and then it got really far away but <laughs> so I was like nervous listening to the birds I was nervous thinking that there was somebody constantly outside my tent yeah so one other thing that I'd like to talk about is wild camping so in that location obviously Going for a discreet wee at night was quite easy. Pitch black, barely anybody around. A few cars making that odd wrong turn, but then spinning around. It was easy enough to hide. In the morning, I mean, I wanted to go up for sunrise and the sky was a bit pink, but it wasn't really anything spectacular that I witnessed. So 
I didn't really film it, I just peeked my head out of the tent. But I was desperate for a wee, like so desperate. Where do you go? It's alright for a lad, you just whack it out. The worst people are going to see is your back. When you're a girl, you have to like rest against a tree and squat and you feel like you look like golem and you hope nobody sees you and it's just all a bit a bit messy really you try not to pee on your own trainers you try not to pee on your own pants honestly being a girl I wouldn't really recommend it you lads have got it way easier Okay, so I've just switched my camera back on because I've been doing some boring ass miles. Not necessarily boring like they'd be fun on a big bike, but just like I started out on the A75 in Scotland and that's not the most riveting uh, road that there is. So yeah, A75, boring road, <laughs> lots of just trying to overtake lorries and stuff. And then kept going, got to Gretna, carried on, got to Carlisle, a lot of A6 work <laughs> through Plumpton. And now I've just stopped at a fuel station for fuel and I buckled and I put my heated kit on because it's too cold <laughs> and I've got a full tank so I don't have to worry about it <laughs> look at a cube Jap life yeah so I don't have to worry about it cutting out now because my uh, bike's gonna be running for the next three hours I'm not planning on stopping Jersey ice cream farm to the left. I know I've just said I don't want to stop, but oh, god damn it. Probably would have ended up stopping there as well if uh, the battery wasn't dicky. Tell me you have a tiny penis without telling me you have a tiny penis. You put your reg as big dog. Oh, the views are beautiful. Oh, it's so good to be warm. I can't explain it. Oh, twisties. Oh, look at this. Imagine you're on a fast bike doing speed limit, of course. Look at this beautiful open road. Oh, it's windy. I'm getting blown about everywhere. He made some war! Oh! He made some pro- Ah! Oh! Shit the bed! I didn't have any control then, I just was getting pushed into the curb. Oh, it says keeping a low gear but look at that monstrous hill I've got to get up. Now we're just going to go flat out. We're going to use all the help we can get. All the help we can get. We've got to drop a gear ready. Come on. Come on, little sinus. You absolutely got this. You absolutely got this. Come on, come on, come on, girl. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Oh, on a bit of a flat now. Which is great. Oh, and then we've got a bit of a downhill. Oh, this road. This road is an awesome fun. Take the next right on Gilkway Tree Lane. And by right, you mean just bear up the hill even though it wasn't a perfect wild camp I still had a cracking time it was nice just to 
can actually get some miles in on the old Sinis and also get some Zen time for myself. I hope you have enjoyed this vlog. If you have, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. And hopefully guys, I'll see you on the next one. Take care.